All right, check out our new sponsor, Greenwood Stocks. They want you to know how to be able to trade stocks and be your own boss and be free to travel the world by making passive income. We all need that passive income from stock market. What are you waiting for? Call the text 281-760-3170. If you didn't catch that, that's on your screen. Or check them out at social media, Greenwood Stocks, and catch them at Gmail, Greenwood Stock Trading at Gmail, and the YouTube channel is Greenwood Stocks. Appreciate them for giving me the opportunity. Check them out. We out. All right, let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. You know, Mark Cuban, you know, basically saying that they're not gonna play the Dallas, they're not gonna play the national anthem at the Maverick games anymore. Talk about it, hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, shit video. Man, I, t I turned it in late last night, man. I was gonna go live. I got pissed off last night, man. Just wanted to sleep. I probably it was probably better off that I went to sleep anyway before I got pissed off. So we didn't do the live yesterday, man. But I just been tired ever since driving back to Columbus, Georgia, to here. But um, chat the NBA talk playlist, hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. So you wanna know why I ain't kind of been more active and tired, man. I missed the Super Bowl, woke up, watched the first little half of the Super Bowl when the Chiefs scored the, the, uh, the field goal. Woke up, halftime show was, I, I was tired. I don't know if I, it was terrible to me, but I don't know, cause I was half asleep and then I was been tired trying to recoup my energy. But um, but yeah, Brooklyn lost to the Pistons last night. I didn't watch the game. I knew they was playing. I just thought Brooklyn was gonna come in and smash this. I ain't gonna lie, but. No KD last night, and um, it's more like we, I don't know. but KD didn't play last night. But Jeremy Grant was phenomenal, man. Thirty some points, thirty three points, I think. And like he breaking, he almost breaking records. He didn't hit two threes in the first twenty three three games. I think he got a few more games to hit two threes in, and then you know he breaking a record. Or he joined, he become the tenth player to do it or whatever, but. You know, Jeremy Grant, you can check my Detroit channel. I talk some Pistons too, Mercy Sports Talk. Jeremy Grant has been a phenomenal find for the Pistons, man. He, you know, I guess, you know, him just being kind of a, a 3 and D guy, being a spot up shooter, um, being a spot up shooter, and now he, he's been able to show that he can create his own offense. And for us, he's been great. That Blake Griffin can, you know, play back how he was when we got him, you know, a couple years ago, his second season with the Pistons, where after he did a half season. You know, we we would be a playoff team in these, but Blake Griffin, you know, he walking up the court like he's like he walking up in heels. But um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say I was surprised. I thought I started to throw something on there on 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 on, on a uh, on the game, man. And just Brooklyn don't play no defense. You know, they can point to James Harden, they can point to Kyrie, but you can't have a backcourt that ain't that don't have two willing defenders. Maybe back in the day where when you had Mark Jackson and Rod Strickland and, and and you had the old school type of point guards who wasn't gonna. Who aren't gonna just kill you? Put John Stock John Stockton today. John Stockton can average 35, 40 points today. But John knew how to get his teammates Horner set, Carl Malone. John knew how to get keep everybody happy, and then he knew how to go in the kill mode. But or Steve Nash too. You put Steve Nash in today's game, you know he can't defend nobody. He just gonna see red. He just gonna kill, 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 kill. That's how Damian Steph Curry is, and that's not how you play the point guard position, but. They just they just wanted to kill, kill, kill. Back in the day, like how Chauncey was taught to play the game from Larry Brown. Hey, you set them up, you pick your chances when you score, when we need you to pick it up. That's how you play the position. You keep everybody engaged because then, you know, when you come down the stretch and they double you, when you need to keep, you know, that's what Jordan learned from Phil Jackson and, 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 and Tex. When they need you, you throw the ball to John, John Paxson, the motherfucker only took one or two shots and no shot through the three first three quarters, now you need them. He missed it, you get mad at him, but shit, I ain't got the chance to shoot the ball in 36, 30 minutes. And that's what's kind of with Brooklyn. Well, Brooklyn, maybe back in the day when the point guard just wasn't, they wasn't going to just score, score, score. If they was back in that day, that might work, but you got two non-willing defenders. Two guys who don't want to play defense. And one thing, me and Kendrick Perkins, and I want to get Kendrick Perkins on, man. Y'all tweet at him. I want to get him on. I'm not going to disrespect our guests here. Unless they get disrespected first. But he right about this. The number one thing about defense is being a is rebounding defense is willing. You got to be willing to sit there and defend. If you ain't willing to defend, if you ain't a willing defender, you know, it's gonna be all bad for you. You got to be able to will, you gotta to wanna to do it, you gotta to wanna to lock down. And, and being defense ain't part-time. You gotta be a good, great defender, 365, 24-7. That's defense, it's a mindset, it's willing. 
and then you worry about the athleticism, your arm length. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what a lot of young teams, that's what separate, you know, Boston from being a championship team. You know, one of the things, they, put, they got great individual defenders, but they don't defend at a high level as a team. You can have you can you can put Ruben Patterson, Tony Allen, uh, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Hakeem Olajuwon, all on there. They'd be a great indiv- individual defenders. But if they don't defend as one, they don't communicate, call out screens, call out back cuts, switch the right way, trap when they need to trap. If they don't sit there and, and do that the way they need to do it, you know they're not gonna be great defenders. Great defense is about communicating. Understand defensive IQ, understanding defense. People don't think it's a it's a science to deep defense. People don't think it's a science to defense. You know, you watch film, he got a tendency to go left, he got a tendency to go right. Oh, this is what they do? Like, yeah, defense is, is and rebounding is first thing, first you gotta have a willing defender. It's a mindset. You talking about the great two-way players of all time, shit. Akeem Olajuwon, if you have, if I, you tell me to put me a, a team of two-way defenders, Akeem Olajuwon and Hakeem uh, and, and, and um, Michael Jordan gonna lead. And Michael wasn't the greatest perimeter defender, the greatest defender. The greatest perimeter defender for me was Scottie Pippen. You know, Scottie Pippen was was a, was a treacherous defender. He didn't want to shut down Magic in they fight in their first finals when Magic was cooking Michael. Scottie Pippen is, you know, and then you go into like other guys. But Dennis Rodman, people was arguing me. Dennis Rodman wasn't a perimeter defender. Nigga, you just too young to remember. Dennis Rodman was out there guarding Dominique and guarding motherfucking Larry Bird in the perimeter when he was younger. That was that was what Dennis Rodman calling card was, stopping niggas on the perimeter. When he played that wing position, that was what Dennis was about. As he got older then, you know, they started, you know, having them defend Shaq. But his overall uh, prowess... All around, Dennis Rodman, the greatest defender of all time, because you got a nigga who can guard Michael, who can guard Scotty, who can guard a point guard and John Paxson and Steve Kerr. Then he, in his career, he got on there and guard Dennis Rodman, guard uh, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, guard, you know, whoever they need him to guard. Guy that came Elijah one. Nigga, if that ain't the greatest all around defender of all time, I don't know who is. Phenomenal defender, Dennis Rodman was in his career, but. You know, Brooklyn don't want to defend nobody. That's the problem. They don't have a they don't want, they don't have a want to play team defense. Individually, Ripping and Chauncey, and I'm a Detroit Pistons fan. They weren't great defenders. They were not near I said Joe Joe Dumars, um, but they was willing defenders. When they came to Detroit, they oh yeah, we, we want to defend. We want to play team defense. That's what it was about. James Harden and Kyrie. They not willing defenders. <laughs> That's the problem. They don't want to go out there, put their feet in the ground, and defend. You know, they don't want to defend. They can speak about it all they want to, but if the wheel ain't there, I want to see the wheel, and then you speak on it. If the wheel ain't there, I don't want to hear shit about it. I don't want to hear shit about it, man. Them motherfuckers don't want to defend. No. They not going to win. They got to trade somebody. You know? Maybe they should have bought Victor Oladipo over there with um, James Harden. That would have worked as Oladipo. But to be a championship contender, you can't beat James Harden. You can't beat Kyrie. You can't score a bunch of points and give up a bunch of points. Because they don't, they don't play they don't play regular defense no more. You know, if, if they – and shit, look here. They're going to probably put James Harden on the weakest person. They switch it, put that motherfucker on Steph Curry, going to kill him. He going to kill him. So they don't play traditional defense where I got my man. You got, nah, these motherfuckers want to switch and shit. To be honest, they need to get rid of the guy who, who don't want to defend. If it's James, you got to get him. If it's Kareem, you got to get rid of him. You, you got to defend at a high level. Real talk. Because if I can trade James and bring me back the, um, okay, man, I can't think of none of these players today. If I can bring, I'm just saying, it's not true. I can bring me back a Jason Tatum. I trade Kyrie and I can bring me a Ben Simmons. So I say Ben Simmons, Tatum, and I can find it. If I can get somewhere and I say I go back to, if I give me a three and D, man, they just need a lot. They need different. They need a different team, to be honest. They need different. They need two guards that's going to be willing to defend. If I can flip them into a guy like Tatum or, you know, I can flip Kyrie into them, they need some other guys, man, to be honest. That team ain't going to make it nowhere because they don't defend nothing. They're not willing to defend. Kyrie, KD can't do what he was, do it before with Golden State because he, he injured. 
So he can't do that shit no more. He injured and all that shit, man. So, man, to be honest, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, what what's gonna be the solution for them, man. To be honest, I don't know what's gonna be the solution, man, because that shit ain't gonna work. I'll tell you that right now, that shit ain't gonna work. That's just what it boiled down to. That shit ain't gonna. They don't want to defend, man. So that shit don't surprise me none, man. That don't surprise me none. It's, just, it's, it's heartbreaking because you, I knew, you know, somebody trying, people trying to bet me with uh, that Brooklyn going to win. Man, shit. I had to show me first that they can defend at a high level, and they can't. So I'm not I'm not surprised that Brooklyn not being able to do what they're supposed to do because they got two motherfuckers in the backcourt who don't know how to defend. And, you know, and I think with them beating... With Kyrie beating, old, beating uh, Golden State, it was more about Draymond being suspended and, Draymond, and and Golden State losing focus. And him becoming just him and LeBron becoming super hot. Kyrie don't got what it takes to be a champion. And neither do uh, James Harden, man. You know, LeBron was the reason Kyrie was a champion, to be real. And some, and some other reasons, but LeBron was the reason. And James Harden don't got what it takes to be a champion. Anthony Davis did. Anthony Davis was able to. At, at, at Anthony Davis, simple, he was a defender. Remember the national championship game Kentucky had when they won? He didn't score too many points. He was off. But you know what? When the offense wasn't working, Anthony Davis, the defense was working. Davis is a willing defender. When LeBron needs to be a willing defender, he's a willing defender. And to be honest, you can't ask KD to go out there and be fucking Ruben Patterson this year. You know? Because he come off with Achilles. I'm tired of talking about Brooklyn is a disaster. They don't, if they don't trade one of them dudes for uh, all the depot plus some or plus some of their picks back, they're going to be in trouble. Because one thing about Paul George, when he off, hey, he going to defend. We know that. But, uh, yeah, Mark Cuban, most people thought was a racist because he called Kenyon Martin a thug to his mom, his mama in the stands or something of that nature. Um, he saved Delonte West's life. And maybe it was just a, a choice, a wrong choice of, of words. But, um, basically, they playing the national, they stopped playing the national anthem because they said, you know, it's offending people. And they want, they want basically a, a more multicultural national anthem um, for the people. I ain't mad at it, you know. Really not mad at it, you know. You got a white person saying it that they seeing some things wrong, and they want to change the world. I'm not mad, I'm mad at it. Whatever, whatever it mean, you know, to some people. I mean, now America's one of the biggest melting pots countries that you can find. You know, I know the UK is known for for that. A lot of people coming over from, you know, different countries in the continent of Africa. But America has now got a uh, Chaldeans. You know, I'm close to the largest uh, Arab uh, population, populated city in Dearborn. In America, I mean, it's just American is a melting pot. We need a new national anthem that symbolizes where we are at. Now, you got some conservative people, and I'm not a conservative or a liberal. Sometimes I'm conservative on some things. Sometimes I'm liberal on other things that they don't want to change the country. They love the racist history. They love, you know, what it used to be. And it's time for a change. It's still America, still a young country. And um, and to be honest, contrary to what people believe, uh, Malcolm X said that, you know, he came back from Mecca that we need white people. We need white people to, to to really change it, you know, and they there's you know they need them to change it, and uh, and obviously we gotta get our shit together as you know black people to change it, and other people gotta get their shit together to change it. But it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think about Mark Q about Brooklyn Nets. Um, other than that, man, I, I don't know how to feel. I mean, I feel I, I just feel like it's time for somebody to write a new national anthem. But you just got people who just stuck in their way. I mean, you talking about people that's fifty years old. You know, I remember my boy was like, you don't believe that Joe Biden can change? And my whole thing was like, man, that motherfucker 70 years old. You expect him to change? Hell no. Hell no. I ain't going to see the light. I mean, you got to understand people that was born in the racist side, the racist part of the, of the United States history. Do you really think they're going to change when they learn all their life to be racist? Hell no. Now, their kids can change. Their kids can definitely change. You know, because a lot of them live in, they live, we live in totally different worlds. My city can be right here, and your city can be right there. It's totally different worlds. I mean, I said I live close to some of the best suburbs you can see. You can see it's just night and day. It's night and day. A lot of people don't see it as being a problem, but if you put the motherfuckers in our shoes in our neighborhoods, how we don't own nothing, everybody else owns something because we sold our shit. And that's the number one thing. If your parents, people talking about, well, black people don't leave their people nothing. That's bullshit. I know some people that get left houses and all types of stuff and fuck them off. So that's not true that, that that blacks don't leave their kids. None of their kids don't know how to take care of it. They get a, a 
a hundred thousand dollar house that's worth two hundred thousand. They sell it for a hundred fifty. Take the money and fuck it up. And that's and that's sad. But that's just what it is, man. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, Kari. Kari, <laughs> sponsorship, whatever. All my social media links, description, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook group link there as well, too. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link is in the description as well. This was the donators. As you know, you know, monkey boy. You see, I'm just talking shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, racists be mad as hell. That shit changing, man. You don't need to change the country. You know, a beautiful anthem is beautiful. You got some people that come, immigrants that come in that say shit like that. But on my social media subscription, want to make a financial donation? Cash app CJ Good three one three. That's in the description. PayPal link in the description. Best way to donate. Share, share the video. Appreciate the love support. We got.